Hi folks, it's Darcy from The Purposeful Pantry and welcome back to my channel today. We're going to be talking about oven dehydrating. This is not the same thing as oven drying. Don't even think that I'm going to go there because it's actually an unapproved method for any kind of food preservation at all. We're talking about using your oven to dehydrate foods. All right, so there are many reasons why you might want to use your oven to dehydrate. One, you may not be able to afford or have access to a dehydrator and you don't have the ability to dry things outside because of your weather, because of your circumstances, you may not have an outdoor space where you can do that. So an oven is an option to use if you need it. Here are some benefits to using your oven. It can dry faster, but instead what it's actually doing is cooking more than it is drying because most ovens do not get down to the proper temperature for drying, but will still work, especially if you're doing snacks. It's perfect. You also don't need extra equipment. Um, you don't need a machine that you have to store somewhere. You still need your cookie racks. You still need um, some parchment paper, but you don't need expensive equipment. I mean, you still use your knife, but you don't need something extra. And also it can help you if you do have a dehydrator to help you move through produce faster. If you're right now at the end of your harvesting season, everything's coming at once. While you're drying um, long storage stuff in your dehydrator, you can still use your oven to do a quick snack or you can finish things off in your oven that have been done most of the way. You just need that last little bit um, and you don't have to worry about some of the drawbacks, which we'll talk about later. Um, but you can finish things off in your oven um, to make sure they're completely dry while you get your next batch in your dehydrator. Let's talk a little bit about the drawbacks. One, it uses more energy than a dehydrator does. Wattage on most dehydrators is less than 800 watts. Um, in an oven, I don't even know what your oven may run, but they run much more and they take more to keep that heat inside the cavity. Two, they also, like I said, if your temperatures can't be brought down to the proper drying range of anywhere between 95 to about 150 for most foods, you're, dry, you're cooking them instead of drying them. Now, some ovens do have the ability to be turned down to a lower temperature. And if you can do that, that's great. Then you're, then you're golden, especially if you have a convection oven. Um, most of those have a dehydrating setting now. You just need to read your manual to on how to do that correctly. And if you don't have your manual, you can download one off the internet by just looking up manual PDF and the name and model of your oven. The other thing about using your oven is that there's no fan, if you don't have a convection oven, that moves the moisture out of the chamber so that you're left with moisture still kind of hanging around so it doesn't dry properly and as well as efficiently as a dehydrator does. The last thing is that it can be dangerous, especially if you have small children or adults with mobility problems or actually anyone with mobility problems who have access to your up to your kitchen. If your oven is left open, like I'll show you how to do it in just a moment, you run the risk of someone either reaching in and touching, falling and tripping and touching and possibly burning themselves. So I really want to warn you that if you're going to use your oven to dehydrate, be very careful and mindful of those in your household who may get hurt. Even for yourself, I'm a klutz. I'm gonna burn myself, so I have to be really careful. One last drawback about your oven, it takes up time. If you are trying to dehydrate in your oven, <clears throat> yet you're still trying to move through produce, trying to get it done or trying to get dinner ready that night, your oven is now taken up with dehydrating. Okay, so if you're gonna use your oven to dehydrate, you need to test the temperature first if you have that option. Um, there are uh, thermometers for your oven that are like four or five dollars that you can get from Walmart, from Target, from your grocery store, from Amazon, and you can test the temperature of the lowest setting of your oven to kind of know where it's working. And that way you have an idea about um, where your temperature is setting. So, so if it's at 170 degrees at its lowest setting, you know that you're gonna to have to prop your door open. If you can actually turn it down, if you have the ability to get it down to 120 degrees, then you're fine, you can dry anything and you're good. Now you can still use cookie sheets. If you have a cookie sheet with a rack on it, that makes the best uh, option about what you're using because it allows the air to flow around the food. Now you can dry it right on your racks of your oven, but it depends on how clean they are. Uh, it depends on how widely spaced they are because food may still fall through. Um, but, but a cookie, uh, like those drying racks will work perfectly that you can actually put on top of your rack if you don't want to use the cookie sheet and you have plenty of airflow. You can still use parchment paper, but remember parchment paper can burn. Uh, usually it's at the high temperatures, but you just want to be careful of that. You can also use oven safe silicone mats. Um, that works perfectly well too. 
Now, a tip on using your oven to make it more efficient, if you have the ability to set up a fan right by the oven door where you've got it propped open, and I'll tell you a little bit how to do that in a minute, and you can set up a fan here, it can blow some of that moisture out through the oven, the other side of the oven door to help circulate the air better, which will make it a little more efficient. Okay. When you're dehydrating, um, you still prepare your food exactly as you would if you were doing it in a dehydrator. You can cut your, your any of your berries you want to uh, prepare ahead of time, and I'll link up here how to do. You want to go ahead and prepare those just like you would if you were in the dehydrator by poking them, by blanching them, or by splitting them in half so they have the ability for the moisture to leave the fruit um, and dry properly. Otherwise, you're going to have something called case hardening, which is when the fruit dries hard is a shell on the outside, it gets the skin gets uh, dried tough, and then the moisture on the inside of the fruit cannot get out, which means that you're left with, uh, when you think it's dry, you still have a lot of moisture encased on the inside. This is when you go and do, uh, when you store them, you can get mold because it molds from the inside out. Okay, so if you're ready to put something into your oven to dry, you're gonna set your oven at its lowest temperature. Um, if you're down in the 120s to 150s, you're fine. But if you've got a, a one that doesn't go below 210 to 170 or wherever your low setting is, you're going to prop your door open. And what you can use is a wooden spoon. You can use a wooden block and you can use an oven safe silicone mitten with the open side out. That way you don't have it on the inside. Um, but you're going to want to be very careful. You don't want to walk away from it. You, you need to stay in the area so that you can make sure that nothing happens. And again, those mobility impaired individuals, be very safe. Once you've put your food inside, <clears throat> you're going to dry it. And what you're going to want to do is check it about every hour. And you're going to want to flip things often, especially if you don't have uh, anything up on a rack because things, things can stick. And you want to make sure that they get airflow on both sides. And I can't tell you how long anything's going to take because it's different in an oven and it will, it's so different than a dehydrator. You're just going to have to keep an eye on it. Most things like, like if you're going to do chips, uh, like for any kind of green chips, um, or anything like that, they're probably only going to take an hour or two, um, because they're going to get crisp and you're going to, you're going to have, uh, they're, they're going to go faster than if you had them in a dehydrator, but you're going to have to just keep an eye on things, um, and to, to know when they're dry. Now there are plenty of uh, recipes on the internet where you can go and check the times for people who are dehydrating in an oven, um, but still use those as a guide. It's always going to be different for your oven, your home's humidity, whether or not you're able to move out the moisture, um, how you prepare the food, etc. Now some tips. If you want to dry herbs, the best way to do it is to hang it out in the open air. That's the, just the best way, but you can still do them in your oven and you can leave them in your oven overnight, door shut. The pilot light will take care of some low, uh, low heat. Um, but if you don't have a gas oven, then you can just leave your light on and it will generate a very mild amount of heat and you can just leave your herbs in overnight or even into the next day um, because they'll just dry on their own just like that. If you're going to do fruits and vegetables, like I talked about before, make sure that you've proper, properly um, prepared them so that you don't have to worry about case hardening, especially if your oven does not get down low enough. It's going to be that case for grapes, for blueberries, for cranberries, for green beans, for anything that has a skin that will harden or toughen up drying and the insides cannot get done. So make sure that you open those up by blanching, freezing, poking, well freezing for the berries that you can freeze for a couple, like for a day before, and then smush them a little bit as they start to defrost and then you put them in your oven. Now if you're drying jerky, jerky's perfect in the oven, the 170 up, you're, you're, you're golden, you're fine, it's just dry it, you're good. Um, you'll want to test your temperature on your meat just in case because you want to make sure that you've kept it up to safe temperatures, 150 for meat and 160 to 65 for uh, poultry. You can always go and use your oven to blast jerky after you've done it in the dehydrator at 250 for about 10 or 15 minutes to make sure the temperature in that meat gets up to the safe temp to kill all the bad bugs inside. That's a good tip to use your oven, even if you're dehydrating. All right, so how do you know when it's done? You just have to check. Um, I'll leave a, a link below to my storage and conditioning post where it talks about how you know when things are done, but you're going to want to look for those same sounds. Remember, if you've got a higher temperature and you're drying at the higher one, it's going to cook a little bit more than it dries, but you're still looking for that crisp break. You're still looking for when you hit a countertop and you hear a, a hollow ping instead of a thud. Um, you're looking for the, all those same uh, dry leathery results that you get in dehydrating. 
The next step after you've done it in your oven, you still have to condition. And I'm gonna leave a link here for my conditioning video that I just did. Um, conditioning is important to make sure that the food is properly um, dry, that it's equally dry inside. So if you have one piece, it might be a little bit, um, have more moisture than the rest, that it will kind of even all that out between all of it. Or that if you've got something there that's too, that's still not dry, you're gonna catch that with a condensation and moisture buildup that you'll find in the jar and dry it again before you put it away for storage. And proper food storage um, is always in airtight containment that's about the same volume as the stuff that you have inside. You're going to want to do airtight with a canning jar, with a commercial jar, like a, you know, like spaghetti jars. I mean, use anything that has an airtight lid, Tupperware, like plasticware, as long as it's actually airtight. If you squeeze it and you can feel or hear air moving out, it's not airtight. You don't want to use it. Um, I'll leave um, a video here. Uh, and the i cards if i still have space but i'll definitely leave it down in the description below about how to use a vacuum sealer to, to to store your food storage and a post on how to do it properly um so i hope that helped encourage you that you can dehydrate even if you don't have a dehydrator use your oven use it properly use it safely and you'll be able to put away some food in your food storage to get you through the winter and into the next year so thanks for watching and i will see you later